Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth episode of the 2024 Oregon High School Football Clips of the Week training video. We are past the halfway mark, and as we head towards the end of the regular season, we are looking forward to the playoffs coming up in several weeks. As always, all rulings and clips have been vetted through Oregon State Rules Interpreter Kevin Hatfield. And as always, we do not mean to call out or embarrass any individual official, association, player, school, or a coach. Our goal is to work towards one rule, one mechanic, and one interpretation throughout the state of Oregon. And with that, let's look at this week's Clips of the Week. A couple of weeks ago, we showed a video that was very difficult to officiate. It involved a play with a long pass down the sideline. And our wing official that was on the sideline had to retreat in order to stay out of harm's way. And they retreated backwards into the team area rather than laterally down the sideline, either to their left or right. And we encourage officials to be able to work sideways or laterally around the sideline. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that the restricted area is free from any players or coaches. So let's take a look at a few clips here where that doesn't happen. And as the camera pans out here and gets wide, we're gonna notice at least four coaches that are in the restricted area while the ball is live. That is illegal. That white area there, the restricted area between the 25 yard lines, cannot have any coaches or players while the ball is live. Now this play obviously went away, but had the play come the other direction and the official had to work down the sideline, we have several people in the way of the official. This is a still shot from the same game just a couple of clips later. And as we can see here, the line judge is on the 25 yard line. And within five yards of them, it appears we have five coaches or members of the staff that are in the restricted area with a sixth coach within 10 yards. If this play were to go the opposite direction, this official is not able to work that area safely. Now, we don't want officials going out of their way to look for this and throwing flags for this but we would ask the coaching staff to make sure that the restricted area is free from any members of the coaching staff, administration, or players while the ball is live. So let's take a look at a couple of instances where this happens. So on this play, we're gonna have a punt and the line judge is gonna work down the sideline just like they're supposed to. And we have a coach right around the 32 or 33 yard line that is clearly in the restricted area. To their right, we see several more members of the coaching staff that also appear to be in the restricted area. And we're gonna see our line judge come by here and they're gonna throw a flag. Now we would like the official to throw that up in the air rather than simply drop it. Number one, it's not as confrontational. Number two, it helps everyone on the crew see that you have a flag. But this area is not clear. Now this was the first instance in this game. This will simply be a sideline warning and this is the one warning to this team. Now later in this game, we have a free kick. And again, this is going to come down the line judges sideline. And we're gonna see that towards the end of this return, the line judge is going to have to work around members of the team again and they're gonna throw a flag there right around the 27 yard line. And it appears that we have both a coach and a player in the restricted area while the ball is live. Once again, we'd recommend that the official simply throw this flag up in the air. This is a bit confrontational. We don't want you throwing it at the feet of a member of the coaching staff, administration, or a player, but this is a correct call. Since this is the second instance of this, in the same game, this results in a five yard penalty. If we were to have a third instance, or if there was contact with someone in the restricted area, that would result in a 15 yard penalty and an unsportsmanlike foul. So officials, make sure that you are working hard to keep your restricted area clear. Take a quick look before a play to make sure that all of the coaches and players are out of the restricted area and coaches we ask that you do your part in ensuring that the restricted area is free from any bodies during while the ball is live in order to keep officials and players and coaches all safe.
we want to take a look at a few plays that involve the back judge mechanics. And as a reminder, these changed last year where we're asking the back judge to line up in the end zone until the ball is down to the 11 yard line. And because this is still a relatively new mechanic, we do see back judges struggling from time to time. But the idea here is that if we recognize a short pass or run, that the back judge hopefully has time to get to the goal line to assist the wing on ruling whether the ball broke the plane of the goal line for possible scores. So as we watch this one, we're going to notice that we're going to get a run pretty quickly here. And the back judge has a lot of opportunity to move forward towards the goal line, but rather they move laterally in the end zone. The wing is having to trail this play. And this is a bang bang play here at the pylon. It's very difficult to tell if the ball breaks the plane if you're the wing here. So in this case, we'd like to see the back judge move towards the goal line. They had excellent starting position about seven yards deep in the end zone, but rather than moving forward, they move sideways and we'd like to see them move towards the goal line. Take a look at a clip that's somewhat similar, but this time it will involve a pass play. So on the play before, we asked the back judge to work towards the goal line to support the wing official on a run. In this case, we're gonna get a pass. And back judges, as soon as you read pass, we need you to get to the end line. What we're going to notice here is the back judge is running towards the action and they're going sideways. They're going to get threatened here and in fact they almost get hit by a player. And we have a pass that goes towards the back of the end zone here. So the end line is the most important line. So back judges as soon as you read pass here get to the end line. It's better if you can get stationary in order to rule on a play. Now this does appear to be a catch inbounds for a touchdown, but let's take a look at how quickly the back judge makes a signal here. This is a very quick signal. Take a moment, pause, make sure that the player secures the catch. It sometimes feels like it takes forever, but the last thing you want is a quick touchdown signal here only to see that the ball maybe had come out. Now, this is an important distinction here on this play. We're not going to worry about whether this player survives the ground. That's not a phrase that we use in high school. But we want to make sure that there was no bobble here. Make sure that our wing official didn't see anything that we need to be aware of. It's okay to slow down. We don't need such a quick touchdown signal. So one last look at some back judge mechanics. And this is going to involve a quick swing pass. And the back judge is going to do an excellent job. They've started in the end zone. They're going to work quickly towards the goal line as, they, as soon as they read that this is a swing pass. And they're going to be in excellent position to help the wing if necessary on this ruling. Now, the clip gets cut off, so we don't see exactly what happens here. But we'd expect the wing and the back judge to look at each other and make sure they each have the same ruling before coming up with a signal for either out of bounds or a touchdown but an excellent job here by this back judge reading the play and getting to the goal line to support their fellow official. We've talked a lot over the last year and a half or so about the point of emphasis regarding hits against a defenseless player. And as a reminder, there are three exceptions to that foul. One would be that the players are simultaneously playing the ball. Two, that hit would be with open hands or the third one is that the player is using a wrap-up style tackle so let's keep that third exception in mind as we watch this play now before we roll the clip I want to note one thing you're not seeing a back judge here unfortunately earlier in this game the umpire had gotten hurt and the back judge moved to take their position but rather than taking it as the umpire they moved to the center judge position as a reminder, this is not an approved mechanic in Oregon at this point. If you have to work a game with four officials, we ask that you utilize the umpire on the defensive side of the field, not the offensive side. And with that said, we're going to take a look here at a hit against a receiver towards the headlinesman's side. 
And this certainly looks like a hard hit, but hard hits can be legal if it meets one of the three exceptions. Now, if we had an umpire or a back judge, we might be able to see this, but we have the headlines when make a call here. And we're gonna take a look at this from an end zone view. And I apologize that the screen is quite busy here. But we're gonna notice here that the defender does an excellent job of wrapping up and then driving the offensive player to the ground. This is exactly the type of tackle or play that the defender should make. It meets one of the three exceptions. This should not be a foul for a hit against a defenseless player as the defender utilize a wrap up style tackle. This is exactly the type of hit that we would want the defender to make. One thing that we've noticed a lot in looking at film is that our wing officials are starting way too shallow on free kicks. We see a lot of wing officials getting barely as deep as the kick, or oftentimes they're lined up in advance of where the kick ends. And a free kick return is officiated very much like a run play if you are a wing. So it's important that you line up deeper than the kicker can kick it. This allows you to look through the returner at oncoming blocks and have a wider angle of vision. And this is a play that's a good example here. Here we have the wing officials lined up on the 20 and we get a free kick down to about the five yard line. And now our wing officials are having to look backwards at the runner, even though they should be looking at the blocks in advance. Had our wings here been lined up at the five yard line or better yet the pylon, as they work their way up the sideline, they'd be able to look in advance of the runner at oncoming, oncoming blocks, just like we would on a normal run play. We're gonna get a block in the back here, right around the 15 yard line. That should be a very easy pickup for the wing, but they miss it. Now, thankfully, our referee does get it. And you can see the coaching staff is upset that there's no flag coming out. We get a second block in the back, right around the 24 yard line, that the wing also misses. So great job here by the referee, but wings do yourself a favor and line up deeper than the kicker can kick. And that would allow you to officiate a free kick return, much like a run play. So let's look at a couple of scrimmage kicks that involve kick catching interference. Before we play the clip, Let's just again talk about our mechanics here. The wide side of the field is towards the line judge's side. So that's the side of the field that the back judge would go to. Once the snap is cleanly possessed by the offensive team, we'd want the head linesman to work their way downfield. And we're gonna see that here. And I'm gonna run this clip once without any sound. And we're gonna see clearly that we have a kick catching interference here at the end of the play at the 30 yard line and our back judge throws a flag for that. But now I wanna go back and I'm gonna turn the sound on. And what we wanna do here is listen for the whistles. So if you hear that, well, the ball is still loose, it is still a kick, the back judge has thrown a flag, but an official has blown their whistle. Now that means we have an inadvertent whistle on this play. However, we have a foul by the kicking team for kick catching interference. Now it's pretty obvious here that the return team would accept the penalty for kick catching interference, which would be 15 yards from the spot. And that would take precedent over the inadvertent whistle. So provided that the kick catching interference foul is accepted, then the inadvertent whistle is disregarded. Now, if for some reason the return team decided to decline 
the foul for kick catching interference, then we would have an inadvertent whistle and the down would be replayed. So we're gonna take a look at another example here. And the first thing I wanna note, this is early in the game, and this is an excellent job by the back judge who goes to the returner and lets them know what they're looking for in terms of a fair catch signal, showing them what a valid fair catch signal is. And that's good to do early in the game the first time you go back with each returner. And as we see here, very similar to the first play, we're gonna clearly have kick catching interference. But an excellent job by this crew to allow the play to continue. They simply throw the flag and let the play continue. So well done by both back judges here in recognizing the kick catching interference. Just a reminder that on punt plays, we want to be a little bit slower on the whistle because we oftentimes get muffs and the ball is still live. Well, that's it for this week's Clips of the Week. As always, thank you for officials and coaches from around the state for sending in clips for review. Several of the clips that we looked at this week were in fact sent in by coaches or officials. Again, all clips and rulings have been vetted through Oregon State Rules Interpreter, Kevin Hatfield. If you have a clip that you would like us to review, you can email us at the address on your screen. Best of luck in your games this week, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you